Hi, hello, how are you? I'm Pia. Today we're talking about my favorite books that I read this summer. Now I was thinking about doing a summer wrap up because I'm doing these seasonal TBRs and I thought seasonal wrap ups would make sense, but I read a lot of books and even though this summer I didn't read as many books as I typically do, I still would have a whole lot of books to talk about and I felt like maybe I could just mention the memorable ones, the ones that are four and five stars that stuck with me and let you know and recommend you those books instead. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. I have some four and five star books that I read this summer and I can't wait to share them with you guys. First up on the list is In the Dream House. This is by Carmen Maria Machado and this is a memoir. I read this for a class so I took summer classes this year and <laughs> this was like a standout in that course for me and this is just such an interesting type of memoir. So Carmen Maria Machado has these chapters that are that are all like a t her take on a certain like genre or um, type of fiction style of um, writing and then there that is interspersed with these kind of more historical research-based chapters and it just all combines into this really interesting book about domestic abuse and about toxic relationships and about Carmen Maria Machado's own experience with those things but it's such a beautiful story itself because it has these imaginings of this story in such different ways that it's not like as straightforward as it might seem. Some of the chapters that you may be familiar with if you've heard of this book are like the choose your own adventure chapter. There's one dream has as noir and there's just a lot of different ones. There's some great like research and quotes and things that um, she uses in the book and is like in conversation with and I just really loved it. It's such a hard-hitting book and such a great way to tell the story and such a unique story, a unique way to tell the story. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I gave it five stars. It was so good. Another book that I read this summer that I did do a whole video on, but I did want to touch on in this video is Fourth Wing. Fourth Wing is a uh, dragon fantasy about a dragon riding school and a girl who's meant to be a scribe, but ends up being a writer. And there's romance and there's political intrigue. And this was such a fun time to me. I had such a fun time reading this book. I don't think it was revolutionary. I don't think it surprised me in any way, shape, or form, but I just enjoyed the heck out of it. And I think it did a really great job at being what it is and not more than that. <laughs> and I just really enjoyed my time reading it. I just thought it was so, so fun and really reminded me of these like dystopian like fantasies that I grew up reading and brought me into, you know, the reading world. So I, I really loved it for that um and yeah I just thought it was such a fun time like definitely not like the best written book not the not the most unique story but um definitely one that I found really enjoyable and I had a great time reading it I gave it five stars and I cannot wait for the sequel oh my god next up on my list is Chlorine now I can't wait to talk to you about this book Chlorine is a book I picked up while I was in London so this is the UK copy in case you were wondering you're like why does it look like that <laughs> this is the UK edition I picked this up and I read it in a day. <laughs> like that is how addictive this book was to me. Like I picked it up from the Waterstones I went to. I sat down in this cute little park and I read some of it, got home, read more of it. I was reading this every second of that time. <laughs> I went to bed right after finishing this book. Like, and I was like, I don't know how to cope. How do I go on? Because it was that good. And this is a really interesting story because on one hand, I feel like I was told it was horror and there are horror horror elements in the book. But it's definitely not the main focus. So I don't want you to like think it's like super horror. <laughs> there definitely are parts of it. So basically this is told kind of in two ways. And I don't even know why this book worked for me so well. Like as I'm going to describe this, I'm like, was that like interesting? Like, did I like that? I don't know. But like, I was so addicted to reading this book that I had to give it five stars. One part of the story is told about our main character Ren who is a swimmer and she's been a swimmer for a long time and she's just very obsessive with her swimming and competitive swimming and getting better and she also has this obsession with mermaids and has had that since a young age and this kind of drives her to do something a little bit drastic uh maybe <laughs> which is to become a mermaid you know by whatever means necessary the cover <laughs> shows that. That was the craziest scene I have ever read in my entire life. Jaw on the floor. And this is also about her relationship with one of her friends who's also a swimmer. So it also is told from that perspective of her uh, teammate 
crush friend person <laughs> who is writing letters to her as she has been this mermaid who has run away uh, from home. So she's writing these letters to Ren the mermaid. So it's kind of told in these dual timeline kind of ways and these dual perspectives. And it's really interesting. This is a book unlike anything I've ever read before. I don't think I'll ever read a book like this again because I just like, I don't even know how this, how to talk about this book. <laughs> it's really creepy and unsettling. Of course, there's all the drama and politics that go into like competitive uh, swimming which are really interesting and like the whole dynamic between her and her coach is really creepy and weird and like just the stuff that happens in locker rooms and stuff that she has to do in order to be a swimmer is like really crazy and like these types of competitive situations are really interesting to learn about compounded with this like horror element and it's just crazy <laughs> like it is just the most unique book I've ever read it's super short but definitely packs a punch and it's just one that I would highly recommend <laughs> you pick up and try for yourself because it's gross and horrific and jaw-dropping times but it's also like a really poignant um intense read so I would really recommend it. Another great book that I read while I was away is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. This is a book I'm so bad at describing this book. Let me try to explain it to you. So basically there's this cafe and there's one table at the cafe where you can sit down and you can get a cup of coffee and you have until the coffee gets cold there's a bunch of other rules to have a conversation with someone who has been to the cafe but you're basically going back in time to a time where you were in this cafe with this person so this person could be dead this person could have moved this person could that's about it um there's more rules uh to the kind of table situation but um obviously this brings up a lot of feelings about going to the past and kind of trying to resolve anything because you can't actually change the timeline at all you can just have this conversation of this new conversation but it won't change anything that has happened so it's really interesting and this is a book that has this vehicle and basically just tells a bunch of different stories about people using this table and there's four I believe in this first book yes so there's the lovers husband and wife the sisters a mother and child I really liked about three out of the four of them one just didn't hit as hard for me I don't know why but the rest of them really really hit I mean we have talk about like dementia and Alzheimer's and like losing a loved one and breakups and like all sorts of different um, situations that these people are in um, and why they're going to this uh, table to this cafe to have this conversation is just heartbreaking <laughs> and really sad a lot of the time so I really really enjoyed this I, I think that it's such a smart book I really like that the rules of the um, magic I guess are so clear and I really like just like the atmosphere of the cafe is really great like all the characters in the cafe are really like strong and I just think it's like a great tool for a bunch of books and this has a bunch of sequels so I'm really excited to read all the sequels because there's just so many different ways that I think that this uh, can be used and I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars could not give it the full five just because I didn't like that one story but did really enjoy it then I read a really fun book I read Vivian Lance's Second Chances which I really want to talk to you guys about because I haven't read middle grade in a while and every time I remember that middle grade exists I am so happy <laughs> like it brings me so much joy this is a story about Vivian Lance who has a history of having the worst first days of school and she is now going into I want to say eighth grade and she is determined to have a good day she is like no more of this crap like she makes a list she gets a new haircut she is so ready to conquer the world as fate would have it she has a bad first day at least in her eyes she has a bad first day you know things don't go right falls down in mud or something like, like stuff goes wrong people are mean to her and she is like what the actual heck like I can't get this right and like I you know will never be able to get this right and I will have like the worst year ever and so she finds herself in a bit of a time loop Vivian Lance's second chances so she keeps reliving her first day over and over again finds out she's in time loop and just kind of figures out all the different dynamics of like what is actually going on on this day like what are other people dealing with on this day outside of myself and having a, a time loop like story in like a middle grade the whole point of a time loop is to kind of see beyond your own circumstances at least in my opinion and see what how your actions are affecting other people and how other people are just like living their lives and like what they're doing and I think that this is just really interesting to have it in like a middle grade setting so I really liked that I love the family dynamics in here she has two dads that have this like antique shop and like <laughs> they're so kooky and crazy and I loved them you know she's trying to make new friends and like I just felt like this was such a sweet story tackled such important things queerness and adoption and running away from home and like so many different things I feel like it was just like such a great book and such a fun key way to tell the story and I gave it four stars I thought it was so fun 
highly recommend it. Okay, the last book I want to talk to you guys about that I read this summer is My Body. It was written by a model, an actress, and writer, obviously, who was, you know, in many things, and notably the uh, Robin Thicke Blurred Lines video, iCarly. <laughs> and I kind of like knew of her, but I mostly knew of her in like terms of this book. It came out a couple of years ago. And this is like just a collection of essays all about her body and her relationship with her body, especially as a model and as a beautiful person. I just like a lot of me reading this was like oh my god models are just like us <laughs> they are just like us they go through the same struggles they're people too it's crazy but really like I feel like there is this whole other side that we don't think about with like pretty people <laughs> and like terms of what they deal with and what they go through and how they feel about their body and the commodification of their body and how they feel in relationship to their body. It's really interesting and I really loved all these essays. I felt like anyone could read this and take something away from it. Really I would have liked to see more about like her becoming a mother which she is now a mother. I believe her child is like two or three but I feel like that also has a lot to do with women especially their relationship with their bodies um, and I would have liked to have have had more essays on that. But other than that, I feel like I just like learned so much. You know, she has been through a lot and I felt closer to her. <laughs> and it was just a really great essay collection, really well written, well said, and everything just was like so well put together. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I highly would recommend you read it. I gave it four stars. Those are all the best books that I read this summer. Let me know what your favorite book you read this summer was. And if you read any of these books, let me know your thoughts down in the comments down below. And with that being said, make sure to like, comment, subscribe to all the things. And I I will see you in my next video.